Welcome to this special edition. In this episode, we will be analyzing the solution to the problem of dark matter. This video is based on the results of a seminal paper, which is an editor's choice in neurophysical letters. Let's enjoy it! Before going ahead, let's revise the problem of dark matter. The evidence for dark matter came initially from the galaxy rotation curves. Basically, the galaxies rotate too fast for the amount of matter which they contain. The amount of visible matter, of course. In such a case, explaining the stability of the galaxies is a challenge without the existence of dark matter. The experimental evidence suggests that the galaxy rotation curves are more or less flat, as it appears on the screen. Then, for example, objects rotating at large scales with respect to the center of the galaxy rotate at the same speed as those objects located near the center of the same galaxy. This is only possible if we assume the existence of dark matter. In this illustration, the animation on the left-hand side follows the standard theory of gravity. On the other hand, the animation on the right-hand side follows the observations, suggesting then the existence of dark matter. One very well-known effect in gravity is the gravitational lenses, which consist in the deviations of the paths of light due to the presence of gravity. The recent observations of gravitational lenses suggest the existence of an additional source of gravity, able to generate further deviations on the paths of light. It is for this reason that some scientists conjecture the existence of dark matter. Another evidence supporting the possibility of the existence of dark matter or an additional gravitational source is the cosmic microwave background. But what is the cosmic microwave background? The cosmic microwave background is a solid evidence of the Big Bang explosion. It is basically a snapshot or picture of the universe, but it was only around 380,000 years old. The history of the universe is divided in different phases, starting with a big explosion called Big Bang. Subsequently, an inflationary period came out. After that, we have a radiation-dominated universe, a matter-dominated universe, and finishing with our vacuum-dominated universe. The standard model of cosmology suggests that 27% of the universe should correspond to dark matter. On the other hand, 70% of the universe corresponds to dark energy, the remaining being only the matter which we know. After revising the problem of dark matter, now let's revise the standard formulation of general relativity. On the screen we can see the Einstein-Hilbert action with the corresponding Einstein equations. If general relativity is the right theory of gravity, then the effects of dark matter will appear inside the energy momentum tensor, which is the right hand side of the Einstein equations. The simplest solution to the Einstein equations is the Schwarzschild solution, which corresponds to the metric appearing on the screen. This metric is spherically symmetric. The symmetries of the Schwarzschild solution simplify the dynamic of a test particle moving around the source. In this case, we have symmetry under time translation and symmetry under rotation. While the symmetry under time translations corresponds to the conservation of the energy, the symmetry under rotations corresponds to the conservation of the angular momentum. It comes out that this is one of the key ingredients for describing the geodesic of test particles moving around the source. With the previous considerations, we obtain the effective potential for the motion of a test particle as it appears on the screen. 
Epsilon equals zero corresponds to the motion of massless particles, while Epsilon equal to one corresponds to the motion of massive particles. Just for illustration, let's focus on the case of massive test particles with epsilon equal to 1. If we ignore the constant term, which is irrelevant for describing the dynamics of the particles, we obtain the potentials appearing on the screen. On the left-hand side is the standard case, where we have that the first term corresponds to the Newtonian potential. The second term is the centrifugal term, and the third term is the general relativity contribution, which corresponds to the coupling between the angular momentum and the source term. The solution proposed on the paper, in order to explain the observed effects of dark matter, is that the symmetries under spatial rotations are not respected anymore at galactic scales, and as a consequence, the angular momentum is not conserved anymore then another conserved quantity should be considered with the corresponding symmetry involved. The new conserved quantity is still connected to the velocity of rotations of the test particles around the source. This change enhances gravity and weakens the centrifugal effect. By considering the new invariant inside the same theory of general relativity, the paper was able to reproduce the scales of dark matter and the effects attributed normally to dark matter. It is evident that the new invariant is not the angular momentum, although it is related to it. The existence of the new invariant is equivalent to a modification of the Kepler's law. In summary, Dark matter doesn't exist and all the effects attributed to it correspond to violations of the spatial spherically symmetric assumption at galactic scales. Let's continue making bright frogs. If you like this video, give us a like, share the link and subscribe to the channel. More videos in Spanish and in English are coming very soon. Continue with us.